It started with me thinking about film as a as something that, that involved no language and just monkey speak because I've always been fascinated by how similar we are to primates. We are primates. There, I've said it, and um, and so the, the obvious way to do it to me would be to have it a, a set in a, a very ordinary setting. Once those two elements come together, it was very easy to write. I wrote it very quickly. <gasps> There's something about Steve's uh, brilliant approach to, to to making it. We he's very calm. I mean, Steve was the lead and directing it, written it, produced it. You know, he did everything. He shot some of it in his house. Uh, at its heart, it's actually quite a simple story, which is a, this kind of uh, a feud between two families and a central love story. The whole thing with this film was to play it straight. Uh, the only difference being there's no dialogue. So uh, that in itself, I think, strips away a layer of artifice. I think that's what the film does amazingly well. It's like an explosion of expression onto the, um, onto the screen. <laughs> And of course, you've got people like Julian Barrett, who's the heart of the film, really, and the 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 sadness that runs through it. And as uh, you know, it's about it's about the generations and how they how they move forward. And he's been left behind. <laughs> we started doing the scenes with with the actors uh, saying the words, and then we would throw the scripts away. But a few days in, everyone was just I mean, pre pretty much people were turning up to set already speaking in ape language. <gasps> <laughs> Steve didn't really put any sort of restrictions on how ape people should be, but he definitely had to direct. You had to hit hit certain points, definitely, um, and it's all there. It is all there in the script. I wasn't very prescriptive about what people should do, how they should do it, because people were, people found their own thing. It was quite interesting. You know, everyone everyone watching this will have their own inner ape. I think dialogue's really overrated. I because th I, I, the communication of humans is very little to do with dialogue. You know and it's, it's much more interesting to scrap it all. But having said that, I, the dialogue I wrote, because I wrote all the dialogue in the script, and, you know, I was so free writing it because I knew no one would ever see it, that it came out really well. So I'm a bit, a bit gutted about that. <laughs> he did write <clears throat> uh, his script in, um, uh, in English and uh, I read it and it was hilarious. And I still think he, he's been quite purist about it and never wants to reveal the actual dialogue, but it's one of the funniest scripts I read in English. I knew I'd be in safe hands with all of them, and I knew they'd all be brilliant. And I, in writing the film, it was, it, I wrote most of the parts for the people that actually did them. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do, and I think everyone was desperate to be in it, really. I was working with Noel Fielding at the time on um, his luxury comedy show, and he was saying, oh, yeah, he's, oh, Steve said that. He said, oh, yeah, can, can I be in it? The only way I was going to get it right was to do it myself, and the freedom that that gave was incredible. And that's the reason why it, it, it works, I think, just because was, it was one vision and done very quickly. So I was able to do it within you know, a few months, really. It's completely funded by me. I was the costume department on it. So I was out buying you know, stuff in Primark the day before. <laughs> I think, I think the, when we were filming it, I think it was like, this is a lot of fun, but God knows how this is going to turn out. No one was quite sure. But I think even throughout that, I think the moments that and still stand out in the film were the sort of quite nuanced, sort of subtle emotional moments um, that uh, he also managed to get. And then as soon as I saw some of that footage, I was like, OK, well, this is going to work on quite a lot of different levels as well. <laughs> And I think cutting the corners actually gave it, financially gave it an edge as well, because we were able to, we didn't have to, you know, bother getting loads of expensive equipment in. We just had a camera and we were just doing, you know, it was just very simple to film. We do, you know, there wasn't a temptation to do anything fancy. <gasps> we premiered it at Fright Fest and that, that went great. Um, I think horror fans responded to it because it's quite out there. Horror is a great place for it because it, people are so open to the strange and the weird and the wonderful. I think art is experimental and there is a tradition of it in this country, but it's, it's like a guilty secret. And I, 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 I like, I'm happy to be a small part of that. It's, this is probably the, where, where these ideas will carry on, you know, in low budget filmmaking. It, you know, it'd be tough to do, but it will happen. I think people will continue making 
you know, out their ideas because you can, you're so free. No one's going to tell you not to. So, you, you know, do what you want. Brilliant, it's fun, it's like being a kid. That's what I felt like when doing, doing art. I felt like I was just playing. It was brilliant with all my mates down the park. It's literally that. <laughs>